Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of The Topping Show is proudly sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value-added resource and services company with a special proficiency in IT security. Heck, I see their founder at least twice a day. Gotta say he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me, you see, that's a joke. If you're an IT leader or business owner, you could reach out to the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button and tell your friends, I would especially appreciate it. Now, going over to the business part of the podcast, you have the Aston Martin Valiant to have a V12 and a stick shift, as all cars should have by default. Even though we may have pol cultural and political decay in the United States and animosity towards each other, there's still a few headlines that give me hope and melt the ice as out of my heart of light. I only partially jest, but having a supercar or a hypercar performance for the v a V12 and a stick shift these days, that's a rare experience. And Aston Martin is smart because there are customers who are more than willing to buy it. Now, this comes to us thanks to the Facebook, specifically someone by the name of Carbuzz. They say, quote, Aston Martin keeps the manual V12 sports car dream alive with a limited edition called the Valiant, of which only 38 will be built with less weight and more track focus than anything this side of the Valkyrie. Under the carbon fiber hood, Aston Martin has massaged even more power from the 5.2 liter twin turbo V12, now making 734 horsepower and 555 foot-pound of torque sent through the rear axle via a, I, I almost have a tear coming out of my eye, a bestoke six-speed transactional manual gearbox. This is beautiful. And of course, the pictures, some might compare it to the Mona Lisa in terms of the craftsmanship they put into this. One of the few good things that comes out of England next to James Bond and yeah, something else they make. Now, it looks incredible. There are some comments that are divisively, you know, comparing it to the boxed, maybe, what was it still, let me call it. Toon Kratis says the modified Mustang. A lot of them calling it the 2025 Ford Aston Martin Valiant. Or, at, yeah, Aston, yeah, yeah they're, they're butchering it in the comments a little bit. But to me, it looks incredible. Of course, it's a coupe, the style. And actually, one of the few cars I think looks pretty good in yellow, which... Let's be honest, traditionally, it's probably reserved for Lamborghinis. A nice little, really big carbon fiber rear diffuser. And of course, the interior, that's where, I mean, I'm, I, I haven't smiled ear to ear in quite some time, to be frank. And you see, I like how they're doing this more and more. That's Martin especially, where you can actually see the linkage. So when you're actually doing the shift, you could see it really moving. Whereas most cars, like, I love my little Honda Civic SI. It's a great little car. When it needs to, it gets 50 miles per gallon. And I can have a little bit of fun on the track as long as it's not a straight line. That's where I was uh, a little disappointed when Miata's passed me. But nevertheless, I mean, with most cars, like mine, the shift boot, I mean, you got leather wrapped all around it. You really can't see what's going on. Great, it's still fun. But this, you can actually see all the details. And here's a nice close-up. The whole center column is carbon fiber. Got that nice metallic shift knob. And you can see all the shift linkage all around it. It's fully exposed. It's beautiful. So the side, I, I don't know, to me, it's just is brilliant engineering. And to me, it's so neat. Because it's very rare. I mean, the Spiker was a very rare uh, bespoke sports car. That was like made for a couple of years. And that was, in terms of anecdotally speaking, when I'm looking at car shows, that's a very few examples of where you can see this. Aston Martin being another one. And lately, I believe Lotus with the Esprit. There's only a couple cars you can really see the mechanisms really working in real time. And yeah, it, 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 it's just so bizarre because you can see from the top of the shift knob, you can see the mechanism, then from the sides. So it's a very unique experience. And of course, you got the great, you know, all carbon fiber interior. We've got the bolstered seats for the track. Now, granted, that being said, the only sad part of it, this is. How many are they making? Did they say 37? Let me pull that up really quick. Uh, oh, 38. I meant to say 37 because one's reserved for me. <laughs> I mean, not really. You could probably get afford perhaps the plastic model if they come out with it, put it on my desk. But I mean, the sad part is, I'm not sure how many of these are actually going to be taken to the track as they're engineered and intended to be. Because again, there's a lot of garage queens where people buy a car, it's an investment, they'll throw it in the garage and Depending on the make and model, it might appreciate in value. Again, not financial advice. 99% of the time, cars go down value. But when you have limited edition runs like this, that's where they can say maybe it'll go up. But 
it is cool to see this unique thing being made as so many car companies seem to acquiesce to go to EV routes and hybrids and all these different things that, um, yeah, they have their use cases. But to me, I mean, this is a very, very unique thing. And again, the competition should be smarter. Ferrari and Lamborghini, they could, again, they're not going to double their sales. It's not that big of a market in terms of people who want a stick shift, but they would increase their sales if they offered it to the consumers. And they actually listened to the feedback. As I said, Porsche is known for this, and Aston Martin still offers a stick shift. Again, it's not even a, it's not even close to fifty percent. But well, fascinatingly enough, Cadillac does too. The Cadillac CTS was a CT4 V Blackwing and CT5 V Blackwing, both stick shift options. They actually had a fifty percent take rate when it comes to consumers choosing the automatic versus the manual transmissions of those vehicles. So there are some cases where it actually does, not, I partially, partially digress, and in this case, I smile when I do so. Because yeah, there are a couple instances where the take rate for the manual is that much. For a Lamborghini, probably not. But why not do it? I feel like that would make a lot of people smile, be a great, unique automotive experience. Especially if you look at vintage Ferraris, some of the manual transmission options, or ones with that option, compared to the automatic, they're selling for two to three times more. So you would think that they would, you know, learn from that feedback, but nevertheless, it is nice to see Aston Martin continuing to have that big display of Smith, the V12, and a stick shift. One of these days would be a dream to drive one of those things. Definitely have to add that to the bucket list. And definitely, you know, handcrafted, you know, England, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's part of their culture, and it's cool to see them continue to make that. So some good business news to uh, start off the day. To, uh, happy to say that. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to tune in. Again, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, leaving a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe, fight the good fight.